Hey guys, this is Jordan Kanigi with the 168 Fishing Adventures. Today we're out on the river talking spinner fishing. Um, very effective way to catch salmon and steelhead in the spring and the summertime. Uh, one of my favorite ways. First we'll talk rod, the way you want to set up for this. I like the Akuma Guide Select Pro 9 foot 8 to 17 pound rod. Uh, it's the perfect amount of sensitivity, but yeah, it has a stiff backbone so that you can feel that blade working as, you, as you're working it through the run. This thing's reeled with an RTX 35S. I like the bigger reel. It's a little bit more line pickup. You can use a smaller reel if you want the 25s. Uh, this is backed with 40 pound test. I like 40 pound braid. This is P-line braid. What I do that's kind of unique other than a lot of people like to do is I tie a bumper of, of uh, either monofilament or fluorocarbon line. What we do here is I use a blood knot. There's multiple ways to use this uni knot. I do a blood knot from my 40 pound braided to 25 pound fluorocarbon. From there, I run about a three to four foot leader down to my spinner. Spinner color is very important, conducive to what kind of water that you're fishing. I take a look at what spinner I think is gonna work for that day. I open up my box, I see what color is radiating with the sky color, with the water color, and that's the one I put on. So don't be afraid to change spinner colors, and in my opinion, all spinner colors work. You just have to face them with the right kind of water. So now we're gonna do a quick demo on how to fish a spinner. Uh, first off, to fish a spinner, you have to find spinner water. Most spinner water is broken up, fast water with a lot of boulders, and the spinner is the most effective way to fish that because you can cover water without getting snagged on the bottom, drift fishing or floating a bobber. So, what we're gonna do first off is talk about directional casting. As we come up to a run like this, we have fast broken water with a current on the other side, soft water on the inside. <clears throat> you want a pursuit cast. What I like to do when I walk up to a run is I look at what's in front of me, I start close, I go to the middle, and then I cast far. So it's one, two, three casts, and then I move down river. So basically you're making a radar of the entire run as you're working through it. Getting the spinner deep enough and at the right speed is what will make you hook a fish or what will make the fish be aggressive. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, always cast about 90 degrees to 45 degrees upriver. Never much more than that. You don't wanna go way up river at like 30 degrees and, and land it in a boulder and have it get stuck and lose your spinner. So we're gonna start about 90 degrees here, casting straight out about halfway across the river to start. That's our close cast. Hits the water, we immediately engage that, that reel and start to reel just enough to get the spinner moving. We're gonna go straight back across again a little bit further. Hit the water, I close that bale immediately and I point my rod tip right at it. The spinner's gonna go wherever you point your rod tip. So if I want it to come up out of a water column, I lift my tip up. If I want it to go back down, I point my tip back down. And that's gonna control your spinner depth. And I see I'm reeling just again, just enough to keep that spinner going. There's bottom, I lift up and I bring it in. When fish see them coming from a distance, they get, they get anxious, they get nervous, they see it coming down river at them. <clears throat> so moving down river towards them, almost like a plug bite, you work them back into the tail out if need be. A lot of times it doesn't take much. If you don't hook a fish on a spinner the first few casts, odds are you go ahead and switch or you keep working down river with the two-step technique. Damn, that was a freaking nice fish that you guys caught. That yeah, dude was stoked. Yeah. He was pumped, wasn't he? Yeah, in a spot not many people would ever fish. And that, that was probably the funnest part of it all. And that's one of the things that I loved about, you know, learning a little bit from you about about not just tributary springers, but kind of spinner fishing in general, is you fish a lot of water that I typically wouldn't fish. Yeah. And so that was cool to learn that from you, you know, just fishing that really faster water that those fish seem to sit in sometimes. And just a, just a different outlook on the way way you fish spinners compared to how I fish them. So yep. thanks for tuning in guys. That was number three of our video series. So make sure you guys hit subscribe. And if you missed the first two, we talked about bobber and eggs in number two, and we talked about locating springers in number one. So you guys can go back, check those videos out, hit the subscribe button, stay tuned for number four. And this last one, we're talking just some basic tips, right? Yep, we're gonna cut it dry, uh, make it easy on you guys, and, and go step to step on what's gonna help your success. And these are going to be just basic tips, you know, just kind of things that will help you out on the water. Use some of the first three videos that we taught you in the, in the fourth video and kind of take those tips, put everything together, and hopefully get out there and catch a springer. So hit, make sure you hit the subscribe button, tune into the next video. We're launching it tomorrow. We'll see you on the water.